Now we're going to add one more element to the optical illusion, and that element is the tactile system, meaning touch, our perception of touch. In earlier videos, I worked with Emma to create an illusion that what she saw in the mirror was a reality. And in doing so, we engaged the visual system, the proprioceptive system, and the kinesthetic system. So when we add one more system of the mind, we're engaging that much more of our mind, and therefore we're creating that many more possibilities for new neural pathways to be created outside of the realm of habit. And remember that the habit here that we're dealing or habits here that we're dealing with are often self-destructive, often engaged with pain, the creation and recreation of pain, which is unnecessary at some point. Um, they can also be engaged with excessive muscle tone, which also influences pain and makes us less coordinated. So adding another element further engages the mind and it also helps to trick the thinking mind into further believing in the illusion within the mirror. I think that was the best one so far. Now I'm going to demonstrate on Hudson the simultaneous tapping and stroking of the same body part. I'm going to stick with the fingers and what I'll do is I'll tap and stroke the same fingers on Hudson's right hand as I am on the, on the left side, on her left hand at the same time. And Hudson will look in the mirror at her left hand. We're going to pretend that Hudson has repetitive stress injury okay, on her, in her left side so that her left hand is in pain all the time. But as we create this illusion, we begin to distance, she begins to distance herself from the pain because it's a non-habitual response. It's a new illusion or we could say a new reality. All right, so I begin the tapping. And Hudson watches the mirror, looks into the mirror, and, and all she needs to do is look, and her thinking mind is saying, well, that's just a reflection. But the rest of her mind is saying, well, that's the reality. That's actually my left hand right there that I'm looking at. And it's the rest of her mind that's actually more powerful, and that's what we're interested in. So it really doesn't matter what our thinking mind is thinking or believing. Now, to further bolster the illusion or the reality, what I can do is what I did in earlier videos, which is to give our subject, in this case Hudson, tasks to perform. Those tasks will consume her thinking mind. It counterintuitively takes her thinking mind out of the equation and in doing so the illusion or the reality you could say then becomes more of a reality. So one task I'll, I'll give you is begin to move your knee toward the mirror and away from the mirror at a count of five and you can count to five in your head. As you do this, begin to make circles with your thumb and continue, make sure you're watching your mirror, the mirror, watching what appears to be your left hand. That's the key to keep watching that left hand in the mirror. Reverse the circle. And right now, Hudson's mind, her thinking mind, is very occupied 
It's exactly what we want. If I, if I want to occupy it even more, I'll say, move, make the circles at a different pace, make the circles even slower, but continue counting to five. So it, it becomes more challenging for her, her thinking mind. Right now, again, we're in an, a new reality, and one that is not associated with the same pain response and the same muscle tone response. And that's exactly what we want. And the thinking mind is largely out of the equation, and that's also what we want. Not necessary, but useful. It just helps to bolster the illusion. So what I was doing was, as Hudson was moving, I was tapping the same places at the same time, or stroking the same places at the same time. And what that does is it, it creates that illusion it further bolsters that illusion that what she sees in the mirror is the reality. Can you tell us what you felt? Um, I felt when I was looking in the mirror that uh, what I was seeing was reality. It was actually my left hand, although I knew that it wasn't. I knew you were touching both hands, but when I was looking at it, it felt like I was seeing the other hand. And when I was doing the thumbs, I wasn't moving the thumb on the left hand. I was just moving it on the right hand. And as I was watching the illusion of the left hand moving, I felt like it was moving. It was uh, confusing and odd. And that's exactly what we want. We want to confuse the thinking mind. Normally we think of confusion as a bad thing. In this case, it's a very useful tool. Confusion, occupying the thinking mind, consuming the thinking mind, so that the illusion becomes more complete. And as a result, I believe more, many more neural pathways, new neural pathways are created that are divorced from Hudson's um, habitual perception of pain her habitual creation and recreation of pain, and her habitual creation and recreation of excessive muscle tone in certain parts of her body, specifically, in this case, her hand and her wrist and her forearm. Thank you.